Hello anyone everyone and no one and welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock Edition tutorial and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how you can build a simple and efficient drowned and squid farm in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Now here we are currently on a season four of Truly Bedrock where I have two of these modules here and you can choose to either build this in a one module state in a two module state or even a four module state. Now this farm is absolutely crazy with the amount of drops that it produces. As you can see here, you get an amazing supply of ink, of rotten flesh, of nautilus shells, copper, tridents, and or mob heads if you have those packs on. It is absolutely insane. And it does not take that much work to build at all. For this build, you're going to need 11 stacks of blocks of your choice to build with. We use blue concrete here. Five stacks of soul sand. Two buckets to make an infinite water source. Right on about eight stacks of tinted glass. 40 plus trap doors. Now I say plus there because if you do the water trick like we did in the video, it's going to take quite a few more. You're also going to need over a stack of fence gates of your choice. Two soul fire campfires. Eight coral fans, four panes of glass, four turtle eggs, eight observers, eight pistons, two hoppers, four chests, two levers, eight redstone torches, and two tridents. Now the rates of this farm are going to depend on how large you build this farm. Here we are on a backup copy of my Patreon server, and I'm currently at my admin T-Man's base, and as you can see here, he currently has four modules of these set up. As you can see, drowned already spawning there just from us loading the area. Now you can take this pretty extreme if you want to, as you can see there, he's got a danger fish farm here and he's also got a creeper farm up above. But as I said, the rates are gonna depend on how large you build this. If you would like nothing but a singular module of this farm, you can expect drops of over a thousand flesh an hour, 32 tridents an hour, 270 plus ink, 51 nautilus shells, and over a hundred copper per hour. Now that's just with one module of this farm alone. I mean, that's not bad. And it's not even that hard of a build. Now, if you want to build two modules of this, you can expect roughly 2,500 flesh an hour, 54 tridents, 567 ink. It literally doubled up the amount of ink you could get from this same. Same with Nautilus shells. I have no clue what you're going to do with that many, but you have them if you want them. But the beauty of what I am after is copper. Look at that, 210. Just by adding another module on the other side, we have doubled our intake of copper and pretty much everything else as well. Now, of course, the final result here, if you build four of these modules, one going north, south, east, and west, you can expect anywhere around roughly 3,000 flesh an hour. 2,739 is what we got down here. We got roughly a 60 tridents. That is over a double chest of tridents per hour. Almost 1,000 ink, 986. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of ink. That is a lot of ink, people. And last but not least, you can get 244 copper per hour. Now, of course, those results are going to vary. This is after many different runs, and these are what we come up with as the average. So if you're just looking for copper, two modules of this can give you around 200 per hour. And of course, four can give you, I wouldn't say quite a bit more, but you can get increased rates from it. Now, this farm works on a very interesting concept of using density check in bedrock edition some farms use it some farms don't i explained this once in my gold farm tutorial and i guess i need to give a quick summary on how that works but we will include that after the tutorial for those of you who are interested in how this farm works on density checks but now let's jump straight into the tutorial so to jump straight into this tutorial, we are going to be building this on the middle of four chunks. If you take a look around me right here, we've done mapped out four individual chunks on this world above an ocean. Now there's a thousand ways that you can find chunks in Bedrock Edition. I have a tutorial on my channel on how to find chunks. We're not here to discuss how to find chunks. We're here to show you how to build a farm. So. We are at the crossroads of four different chunks here. These four blocks right here represent where you want to AFK should you choose to build the full farm with all the modules in place. Right now, we're gonna start off with just one. So from here, our middle crossroads of our four chunks, we're going to go out 
32 blocks, two chunks from here. So we're going to start right there. And that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then, of course, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So that is the end of our second chunk here. And we want to start the farm right here on this first block out here. So all these can be removed because that was just us counting out. So once we are at this point out here, two chunks away from our centralized spot, we are going to start by building us a 12 by 9 platform. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And of course we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and bring this all the way over here like so, and go ahead and connect all of this up over here. You can go ahead and skip two blocks right here and build you another 12 by nine platform on this side over here. There's two sides to this farm on every module of this farm. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Pull this all the way back across here by 12 and connect this up to the other side. So at this point, we have our two modules that are going to hold all of our soul sand. This is going to be our centralized drop chute in the middle. You can go ahead and drop this down by three so that you have a place where your collection system for all your drowns are going to be. And you can take this out eight blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight until you get something that is going to re somewhat resemble what we are going to have here. Of course, you would bring this area down right here. This is going to be the housing of where we are going to have our trident killer down below in just a little bit. We're not to that point yet. So let's go back up here. Let's grab our soul sand and let's go ahead and fill all of this area in in here with soul sand. Now, of course, these blocks right here on this edge, you can go ahead and knock those out because all of these need to be soul sand as well. So you can flip around here to the other side and do the same exact same thing. Fill this all in with so sand. Of course, you can knock all of these out here. Can, well, need to knock all those out and fill that up right there with so sand as well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build this wall up four high all the way around this. So we're going to go ahead and fill that in in the back all the way across here to three and four and do this all the way around the farm the front this is up to you whether you want to fill this in with solid blocks or you want to fill this in with tinted glass now you cannot use normal glass because we do not need to let light through this this farm functions off of surface cap and light levels so if you want to glass the front you're going to need to do it with tinted glass at this point, we now have our tinted glass in the front. We have our frames in. We have our walls in all the way around the place. Now we're going to grab our fence gates. And what we're going to do is we're going to come across here. We're going to put one, two, three, a four, a five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And we're going to do that on both sides of this. We're going to go ahead and open all these up. And we're going to put two more layers of fence gates on top of all of that. And of course, we're going to go ahead and open all those up as well. Now, from here, as a good friend of mine showed me when we were making this farm, if we actually grab some trap doors here, we well, can use these to make our life a whole lot easier here. So we're going to go ahead and run trap doors all the way across the back here. And what this will allow, for one, is when you're doing this in survival, you'll have a place to stand where you'll be able to put the water in without actually getting down in the farm. And two, when drowns spawn here later on, if they spawn in this column, sometimes they like to hang up there and come up here and just bounce in the water source. This allows them to kind of be nudged out of the way and over this way. So we're going to put trap doors in all the way across the back here like us so and we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side so one two third layer up go ahead and put a row of trap doors all the way across like so 
Now, at this point too, it's time to go ahead and grab our water and go ahead and fill this thing in. Now, in survival, this is a bit more of a challenge than what I am going to be dealing with here in creative. But the moral of it's still all the same. Fill all of this in. You can go down one side and then down the other. Now you got a full water source layer on that level. And of course, come all the way across again and all the way across there. Now you got full water source levels there. Now the next layer, we need to get our flowing water to the middles. That way, if anything comes up out of the water, it won't just sit and bob right here. It'll get knocked towards the middle. Now, the way that I like to do this is go ahead and just put a bunch of trap doors all the way across here. A little bit painful, but will save you a lot of problems at the end of the day. Because sometimes when I try to put slabs in here, it just it doesn't cooperate. It messes with the water source themselves. So we're going to go ahead and fill this up with trap doors. And then I'll show you where to place your next layer of water. So once you have all your trap doors in there, you're going to go ahead and grab your water bucket and you're going to water log that block right there. And of course, you're going to do that on every one of these. You're only going to water log the back ones. And then at that point, you can come back across here and you can break out all these extra trap doors that we just put in. I know it kind of seems crazy, but it just trust me, it'll make your life a lot easier. Once you've got all those trap doors out, this back row of trap doors, we're just going to open them and place them against the wall. Then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So once you've got your other side in, once again, leave the very back row of trap doors. That way, if anything spawns in this column, as it comes up, it gets nudged out and moved to the centralized area. So now we're almost there on this one. Next, we need to get our Trident Killer in. So we need to go ahead and come down here. We're going to add in two water sources down through there. And we're going to grab ourselves some full blocks right there. We're going to grab our turtle eggs, which are somewhere around here, not in our inventory at the moment. That, that's not how you spell turtle. There you go. We're going to go ahead and put our turtle eggs right there. And then, of course, now we need our coral fans. Then we're going to put a fan there, a fan there, and a fan there, and a fan there. The drowned see these as full blocks, and we'll try to pathfind over these to get to the eggs and end up in our trident killer, which we need to build now. So let's come down here an additional two blocks and get us a platform to work with to build our trident killer. So now that we have everything in place for that, we're going to go ahead and build our trident killer right down here. We're going to place an observer right there followed up by a piston, put a redstone torch right there. We're going to go ahead and grab an observer, have that watching that. We're going to put another piston in right here. We're going to go ahead and put in our lever and flip that that way so that this does not automatically start a clock once we get to this point. We're going to go ahead and put another redstone torch in right there. Observer. We're going to go ahead and put our other piston right there. We're going to go ahead and grab a redstone torch. Observer. And right here, our piston. Now you at this point can go ahead and grab some tinted glass once again, or solid blocks of your choice. I like to see inside of my farms to know what is going on. So at the front of this, I'm going to leave in tinted glass while all of the sides of this, I'm going to make solid blocks because, well, I don't need to see it everywhere else. I just need to see it from the AFK platform to know that everything is working correctly. So from here, I'm going to break that because I wasn't quite ready to that point yet. We're going to go ahead and put in our collection system and our XP burning system because we're going to be AFKing over there, not near this farm. And as I've said in many tutorials in the past, a buildup of XP on a server or a realm or even a single player world can be very bad over time. So let's kill off the XP and let's gain looting because we're going to be using a trident killer. So we're going to put in a glass pane right there. We're going to come down here and grab our glass blocks again. Of course, I'm using tinted glass because, well, it's my new favorite thing. So we're going to put a couple blocks all the way down through like that. We're going to grab our soul fire campfire and put that right there. That will deal with any baby drown that happened to fall down into the system and help us burn off all the XP. So from there, we're going to put a piece of glass there so that the babies would be trapped inside. We're going to put a hopper directly underneath of that. And from here, we're going to add in a double chest. 
Now at this point, this module is almost ready to go. From here, we need to come back up here and we need to add in some glass on the back side of this and we can go ahead and fill all of this in. Now, as I said in the past, how you do this with solid blocks or with tinted glass, that is your choice. I like to see the farm. Now you cannot use normal glass here because it will let too much light level through. Now, once all of that is done, we can go ahead and grab our tinted glass. Has to be tinted glass on the top because drown are a surface cap, not a cave cap. So we need to make this dark enough during the day that we would get spawns. If you were only worried about getting spawns at night, use, don't even put a roof on it or just use normal glass. But if you want this thing to function throughout the day, you have to use tinted glass here. So let's go ahead and cover the roof of this up. And then spawn proof the top however you want. I'm just going to go around spamming torches on the top of this right now. Nothing's going to spawn on the glass. This is overkill. I understand this. I know this and I accept this. Tutorial people. Tutorial. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and grab our trident. We're going to throw that in there. We're going to go ahead and flip this trident killer on, please. That I said on, please. Okay, I've totally missed something. What have I missed? Well, might help if you get all the torches in place. Right, let's try that again. Let's put that right there. Now, we have a working a trident killer in place. We're going to go ahead and grab in some glass. Put that right across there. And at this point, we could hold our looting three sword and come over here and just wait. We will get drowned spawning in this. You will also get squid. Now, of course, one module of this farm is not going to be super efficient. But it will produce you drown, it will produce you rotten flesh, and it will produce you copper. Now, I would go ahead and suggest if you're going to build one of these, you might as well build two. I would go ahead and recommend you put in another module like this directly beside this. So more or less what you just did while ago. So you got one, a two, a three, a four, a five, six, a seven, and eight. And of course, you would bring this out over here to the same distance. Fill this in across here. Skip two blocks, go ahead and get your next module in on this side, come all the way across the front like so, and of course, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then here's our back wall back here, and build you another module just like you did the first one over there. Once we added in our second module here, if we take a look here, we will see some drown spawning at any moment and they can pack spawn in packs of four. As you can see, there goes four drowned right there. Now, of course, if the babies were to fall down between that glass pane, which sometimes they will, they would burn up on the campfire as well down there. So this is your first example of just a singular set of these. If you want a more advanced set, well then let me jump over to Truly Bedrock and show you what I've done this season on there. Here we are on season four of Truly Bedrock. And of course, this is my farming area that has been well underway at this time, maybe finished by the time you're seeing this video. But here is an example of two modules of these set up running at once. Now, of course, these run off of split density, which I explained earlier. So you can have potentially four over here, four over there at the same time. So a very quick and crude rundown on how the density check for this farm works. Right here, these four sandstone blocks represent the four chunks where we started and we built our AFK spot on in the tutorial. Now, between all of this, we have one, two, three, four chunks. These two warped planks here, those represent the mobs themselves that we built. So the best and quick summary that I can give you right now is that if the game sees four drowned right here, it will not spawn you an extra drowned right there. It will not spawn you an extra drowned right there. Because let's say all four of these are inside of the farm over here, okay? So anywhere between here and here, the game is not gonna give you any drowned because it says there are too many right there at this current time. But if the game looks four chunks away, so one, two, three, and four, and over here, it's like, oh, there's no drown. Guess what? The game can now spawn you drown 
over there. So you can literally have in this farm right here, four different drown, five potentially at once and the same over here. While if you built these any closer, say we had these farms in here closer like so, and this was here and this was here and you had your drown here, you would never get drown spawning over there. Never, because it's within four chunks. Never. It would either be one or the other. If this one had them, then this one over here would not. It's not a perfect explanation. I'm trying to give you a quick summary rundown of the explanation. That's why we are AFKing in the middle of four chunks, and these farms are built four chunks apart. We want to capitalize on the game rules about how dense, how thick, how close mobs can spawn together. I hope that helps. But that right there is where we're going to go ahead and call this one a tutorial. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below and or join the Discord. If you're looking for the quickest reply, that would be the place to go. We have a question section on our Discord and T-Man and I or any others in there would be glad to answer any questions about this farm. But that being said, that's where we're going to call this a tutorial. If you've enjoyed it, make sure to drop a like down below. If you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing. But on that note, that's where we're calling it and I'll catch all of you all in the next one. Goodbye, everybody.